Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, um, and uh, if you haven't seen this show before, welcome to Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Uh, uh, if you have not seen the show, my, um, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. This is not about my day job, though. This is about Frank and Mary. If you've seen presentations that I've done, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Northboro and you identify with that, you want to stay right here. So the question is, who are the people that you want to know? What are the programs that you want to know about? So you can just stay right here for the rest of your life. So I've got two terrific guests here who are really part of the organization that has been responsible for so much of why um, seniors can live such a good life here and, and really have a lot of activities that they can meet together here. And that's uh, uh, Harry Squilanti, excuse me, Henry Squilanti, my apologies. I didn't pronounce it right. Henry Squilanti. Uh, and Kerry Martinek uh, from the Friends of the North Pro Senior Center. Uh, so thank you very, very much, both of you, for coming on. Uh, and and um, I, as I as I was mentioning to you before the show, I was I was delighted that you could be on because over time I've learned so much about the Senior Center itself, you know, which is like beautiful and fun, but also the Friends and the the anchor role that the Friends have played in so much of what the Senior Center does and probably will we'll continue to play on what the senior center will be doing. So could you just, you know, talk about now, you know, see so you're from, no, everybody's going to know you, no one knows me. So, but if you could talk a little bit about who you are and why you're on the Friends Board and, and kind of historically the role that the Friends Board has played and is playing and what you're thinking about for the future. I, I know, I know that, um, you know, you had been, you know, had been do done a master plan in recent years. You really kind of thought about where you want to be going. So it's all yours. Great. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks for having us on the show. My name is Carrie Martinick. I'm the president of the Friends and Henry's our treasurer. Uh, primarily the Friends of the Northboro Senior Center is really the fundraising arm. So we work in collaboration with the Council on Aging and the director of the Senior Center to help supplement the programs and, and the funding for programs that's required. Um, we don't, we're not a town organization, we're a 501c3. So we really have the opportunity to get out there in the community and raise funds to support this wonderful place and all of the activities and programs that they do. Uh, in fact, Henry and I were just the other, there the other day talking to Eileen, the current director of the Senior Center, about all the activities that would be great to bring up here. And I think, Henry, we came up with a whole list of different amazing things going on there from the bistro to the daybreak program to, well, Henry Dell Men is one I'm sure you'd bring up. Um, just these great activities that we have there uh, that are available for people. The, but the bottom line is the senior center is open and you're missing out if you're not stopping by. He's one of the dull men. I <laughs> always, one of the dull men. I've always heard about the dull well, men. I love just, that organization. I just love just it. Just to digress, the dull men is an international organization headquartered in London. And there's a branch in Southboro and Pembroke that are very active. So that's uh, and we talk about anything but religion and politics. Well, that's a pretty that's a that's a pretty amazing that's that's a that's a challenge right now. That's a that's a big challenge. So, but so as can Kerry, you... but as Kerry said, one of the big draws to the senior center is our bistro. Uh, we're one of the very few senior centers where you can come Monday through Thursday and order off a menu. You don't have to pre-order. You have a selection of sandwiches, soups. A special we have every week. Uh, it, you know, I like to say it's the best and cheapest place to eat in Northboro. Uh, surprisingly, we have a lot of uh, customers who come from the surrounding towns, not just Northboro. And we even see people from our DPW that come up there and eat. So they must know it's a good meal to eat. So, so you know, do you card these people? Like, do you have to show you're under a particular age or over a particular age to, to well, go in? Well, okay. If you're under a certain age, you have to pay the meal tax. Ah. If you're over a certain age, there's no meal tax. We do not uh, card to see if you live in Northboro. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we welcome anybody from anywhere. Well, I just didn't want to know, want to know if you were carding to see how old they were. You know, I mean, I think, you know, these, these people are getting a break here. So, uh, so, so um, Henry, we were talking a little bit about kind of, and, and, and this is really to the both of you, about kind of historically the role that the friends have played, you know, in the in the building of that senior center, in the in the staffing of that senior center, and 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 now, 
in the ongoing running of the senior center. And, and, and I just want to know if one of you could just kind of talk about that a little bit, because I think people don't, you know, you always see, you think you're in a government building. It's a big government program. You don't realize that it's, it's not just your tax dollars at work. It's a lot of others' contributions at work, you know. Do I take that, Kerry, or what me? No, Henry, I think that you've been around much longer and can speak to that clearly. Well, that's that's because I'm older. <laughs> uh, yes, um, the Senior Center was started in um, in 2011, so we're 11 years old. During those 11 years, the Friends uh, have supported the Bistro with additional personnel. We've also uh, supported the Senior Center with different programs, buying equipment. Uh, right currently, the town pays for the building, utilities, things like that. And for three to four of the staff there, everyone else is either a volunteer or paid for by the receipts or the funding the friends can provide. Uh, we mail out the North Road Times, which is the local, which is a magazine. We mail out 2,700 copies a month. And, and it isn't cheap, believe me. And that's one of the reasons we have to continuously do fundraising, because we have to keep up with our expenses. As I as I mentioned earlier to you, Arthur, when a different personnel is needed, let's say in the bistro, the friends have stepped up, paid their salary. When a strategic plan was needed, the friends stepped up, paid the cost of a consultant to do a strategic plan. We did a rebranding, and our logo is an award-winning logo that we've recently been um, uh, notified that, I guess, in Metro West, our logo was the number one logo for senior centers. Um, we bought other things, like uh, they needed a barbecue this past summer, so the friends went out and bought a barbecue. We needed a device to take movies, eight millimeter movies, and convert them to di uh, digital format. The friends went out and bought a movie maker. So this in when the pool tables needed recovering, the friends pay for the the recovering. Those are the type of things that we do. Uh, the director will come to us, we'll evaluate it, and in 99.9% .9 of the uh, times, we'll, we'll spend the money to do whatever is required. And sometimes I just add like fun events. So for example, the different meals, like the same, this year, I don't think we did St. Patrick's Day dinner, but last year we had the St. Patrick's Day dinner or the veterans luncheon or things like that. We like to contribute to those types of uh, community building fun events. Uh, I think also as we go forward, especially over the period of the pandemic, we've seen a huge shift to Zoom. So just figuring out as the senior center shifts some of their programming to be online, you know, what are some ways, we haven't been asked necessarily to fund that, but some of our members will participate in conversations about what are some new ways we could deliver programming and new ideas and different things like that. And I suppose that's that's been a, you know an interesting, I hate to call it a blessing of the pandemic, uh, was that for 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 those of us and maybe not you, Kerry, but for many of us, right, that kind of knew that Zoom was out there somewhere and maybe in somewhere in this machine, right? Nobody ever used it. I mean, it was like this kind of like exotic thing, you know. And I still remember about you know the second month into the pandemic reading that the number of Zoom um, meetings went from 20 million to 200 million in two months. The most astonishing, but of course, and it was all breaking down. I mean, there was so many meetings, you know, and now that's changing. But I, but I think it also, to, to your point, it has come to people understand now, enough people understand how to use it, that we know now that, that people are really can kind of take advantage of it as a tool whether you need to be virtual or not. You know, I know that I'm doing I'm doing a, like a seminar, I think in Sudbury, and they're doing it two ways. They're doing it live and then there's a Zoom kind of an immediate, you know, and people can call in. This is just, it, it's, it's amazing. Right, It's right. amazing. So I guess try, trying to figure out how you incorporate all of that in, into your own technology, that's a real challenge because there yep. might be, and there might be some costs involved to that. Absolutely. Yep. So, so as you're as you're as you're thinking about this now, well, first of all, just tell me about the organization. So, you folks are in. Like, how many how many of you are there? How often do you meet? And and obviously, the money you know the money doesn't grow on trees, right? The money comes from someplace, right? 
So can you just speak to how you've managed to raise all of this money? Because it is a huge amount that you've raised. No, I just want to go back to one other thing. You've mentioned you've been supporting the bistro. I remember talking to Kelly Berg. Um, oh, remember her? You know, so long ago. What a wonder, right? <laughs> Kelly Burke. Um, and, 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 and her talking about the fact that the reason why the bistro made it at all was that the friends staffed the original bistro person, right? Which, which was an amazing thing. And now it's just, it's just assumed, oh, we have this bistro and everything goes along and maybe we need some more stuff. And that's all like self-funding now, but it took this, you know, it took the money, it took a big investment to, to do this. So, so just kind of, can you just kind of talk about, talk about that a little bit? Who are you, who are you, when do you meet, how do you get your money, right? Sure, yeah. So Henry, do you want me to start with that one? Sure, sure, go, go ahead. So we have 13 board members right now and we're a working board. So everybody on the board is doing something. And so we have all different fundraising activities from the jewelry cart at the senior center every day to different fundraising events. So for example, we have coming up the fun drive. We did that last year where it was perfect because everybody was cleaning out their homes from COVID. And it was a place where you could drop off clothes that we were then able to um, turn it into donations through our relationship with Savers. So we're doing that again this year, April 29th to May 7th. You can drop off clothes and linens and things like that at the senior center at our, we have a trailer set up for the oh, week. And, and, then, and then Savers pays you when you, when you bring yeah. it to that's great. That's How many great. tons did we have last year, Henry? It was amazing. I think we had eight tons of clothes. Eight tons. So imagine the cleanup going on during COVID. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so different things like that. We do the car wash. We're going to do that again this year, August 6th. We have our country store fair is coming back finally. We've been held off for the last few years, just waiting to get that back because we love it so much and we know the community loves it too. So that comes back the um, weekend before Thanksgiving. We have a high tea and art auction coming up. That's September 24th. So all of these events, we feel like it's a great opportunity for people to get back out there and together and at the same time raise money for the to help the friends raise money that supports the senior center. So that's and, and you guys are it sounds like you're definitely going full blast again this year because it's it, it, it now it sounds like you've got a full a full cart. And and I'm, I'm the sense that I'm getting from 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 you folks as well as from others is that programs are oversubscribed, right? I mean, there's a ton of people coming out, right? People have been dying to come out. And finally, there was that initial hesitation, especially among my, you know, my folks, right? And yeah. me, you know, about, you know, well, you know, is it really safe? And, but increasingly people are saying, oh, well, you know, it's okay. So that's yeah. going to be a kind of a, that's going to be kind of a good feeling. Yeah, it, it was really challenging over this past year because we kept scheduling events and then having to cancel them because people were just afraid. We kept getting new waves, but we were really lucky to have a lot of support for our annual fund, which people can still donate to, which was a way to help us still raise money through the pandemic and continues to help give us that little bit of a jump start. Or even things like the raffle basket we just had. We had, well, although you did have to come to the bistro to support it, but we've been trying to do little things like that to keep the momentum going and give people an opportunity. People People, the good message that I feel I've received is people want to give. So you just have to provide a good opportunity for them to do that. Right. Well, you know, I, I always, I try to go by the, the motto, money follows good ideas. Money follows good ideas, right? <laughs> yeah. What you're doing is just good, right? I mean, it's, it, it's really, it's cleverly done, but it's done, to, it's a really important thing also. So for people who haven't done it, you know, that it's so often... You know, you get the, oh, no, I wouldn't go to the, you know, I'm, I'm not that old. I wouldn't go to the senior center. You know, I mean, how, right, how many times have we heard this? Or, and, and it's kind of the, the kind of beyond bingo. Isn't that just bingo? You know, what, what is the senior center? So they haven't even been, right? So, and, I, and, you're, and you're talking the bistro, and, and the bistro is terrific, and the view is good, the food mm -hmm. is good, right? But tell them about the jewelry cart. That's so, that's so good. <laughs> now, do you still have that buyer? It seems to me, I remember several years ago, there was one woman who really loved just finding the jewelry and buying and stuff. Yeah, we have, we still have her, but she does not participate now. Ah. Uh, but she, she's kind of retired, okay? I see. But, she's a uh, consultant. She's a, she's a very highly paid consultant. That's right, right. Nice. Very highly paid, right. Uh, we have had quite a few donations. Some of the families, when someone passes away, has donated shopping bags full of 
jewelry. In fact, uh, four women spent yesterday morning sorting through jewelry to constantly keep the cart updated for whatever season it is. We, we just went through the St. Patrick's Day season. Now they're into the spring season. And to them, jewelry means seasons. To me, it, it's just jewelry. But uh, <laughs> they seem to know what to put on the cart, and the cart does very well. Yeah, and so, so oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I, I I'm gonna mention this because so once again my day job, you know, is I talk to nothing but seniors. I have no I have no client under 55. My median client age is 74. So I'm talking to people all the time about this stuff, and and with, you get to the jewelry, or you don't get to the jewelry actually because folks just you know many times there may be one thing that they're going to leave to the you know daughter or granddaughter you know or something right. But other than that, it's like, oh, it's just the jewelry, right? And so then they then somebody dies and it's just the jewelry. Whereas it so there's a tremendous amount of, of jewelry, right? That is just kind of moving around, you know, for no good reason, you know, and it's going to random nieces and nephews who are like, what am I getting this ring for? You know, whereas it could really be a contribution, right? Yes. And so and so for folks who are, you know, for folks who are thinking about this, I'm just telling you, right? If you've got if you if you've got a, a will right, and, and and you've written a little memorandum that says this is where I want my jewelry to go right, even even if it isn't in the will, that's where the jewelry is going to go right, and it's a big deal. It's a big deal. You know, it can be tremendously. It's a wonderful contribution to the community. You, it isn't like you're taking money away from your kids. You know, the kids don't want it, right? Trust me, they don't want it, right? So I mean, it's just a really nice thing to do. I just I I really like the jewelry card. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so 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 tell me about what you're thinking about for the future. What you're I know once again you did the math. You know you kind of funded the master plan and talked about the master plan a lot. Among other things, is that what also resulted in the logo? I think that was part of kind of yes, what you were yes, doing. Yes, that was the rebranding portion of the senior center. As you might know, we've uh, since Kelly left, we had a, a senior center director. And then she was lured back to her previous town. To Littleton, uh, yes, I remember. Yes, yeah. And uh, we ha right now, Eileen is the interim. She's been interim twice. And they're in the uh, mode right now of searching for a new senior center director. I'm told that within a couple of weeks, we should know who, are, who the new senior center director will be. And then we can go forward again. We've been kind of... I won't say we've been treading water because Eileen is far from a person who treads water. Right. I've met, I've met Eileen. You know, <laughs> yeah, she doesn't waste any time. No, no, no. But uh, uh, some of the programs people might be interested in coming to the senior center, but besides the food, as you, there's the dull men. It's, uh, there also is a program called Daybreak, which I'm sure you're familiar with, Arthur, where Northborough, Hudson, and Marlboro have a... Um, class where you can bring, let's say, one of your spouses that needs uh, care while you go off and do shopping or banking or even take a nap. And that, uh, so on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there is the uh, facility that can take care of a, a spouse for three hours uh, each of those days at practically no cost at all. It's only a, a donation if you want to. We also have the SHINE program, which uh, helps people determine what uh, medical care they need, what other types of care they need. And uh, one of our greatest acts, ass, assets is our outreach coordinator. She's the one you go to. You have any questions about anything about seniors, even if it isn't in Northboro, but you have a relative someplace, you can ask our outreach coordinator and she'll give you a pathway uh, to do. In fact, you helped me, Arthur, with my brother uh, a couple of years ago when he was looking for some, he had some problems, medical care problems. You told me, you gave me some uh, hints and you also were willing to stop in and see him if you, if you, uh, if I wanted that. So yep. for that, I thank you. Um, in fact, we're going to be starting a couple of new programs. One is a Be Well program and another is a memory training program. And I like to joke, uh, the memory training program is great if you can remember to go to it. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the new types of programs. See, they're they're adding that to their agenda for the dull men. 
yeah, right? right? They're gonna be they're gonna be there's gonna be an offshoot, the sharp men. The right. Sharp, These are the dull men that have got their memory back. Right. right? So th so those are the types of programs uh, that we're uh, we're adding. We also uh, we recently started a ukulele class, and most of the people in the class never played the ukulele in their life, but they're enjoying strumming away, and uh, it's they're actually sounding better. We have <laughs> we have them on Fridays when there's not too many people there, so. <laughs> But they are sounding much better. So that's the type of things that we're doing. It's a fun place to come to. And as you said, it isn't for old people. It's for seasoned people. We're seasoned. We're not old. For seasoned people. And, and, but, and I just want to do another plug for that Daybreak program. I mean, th this is something, there are two interesting things about Daybreak. First, um, most communities do not have any place, really, where if you have a loved one, typically a spouse, who's got some memory problems, right? Where they, where they can be in an environment that is safe, right? And, 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 and not just safe, but really kind of stimulating in, in that it is really focusing on folks who have all got memory problems, right? And so you can, for, for little or no cost, right? G give your spouse something special and also give yourself something special, which is a break. Which is a break. I know that folks have, and in, 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 I know that folks have, have interviewed, you know, t folks who have come, right, whose spouses have come, and they said, so, so, what, what do you do, you know, during while your spouse is there? I just go home and go to bed, I, mm -hmm. you know, you know, maybe people get their hair done, maybe people do, but really, it's it's just a break. The, the, but, and and as far as the folks there are concerned. What is the thing about memory problems? I mean, I always get on this because, you know, I'm old, you know, so everybody's got, we have memory problems, right? Is that I, it, the thing about memory problems, I remember when I was younger, so I grew up in the 60s, right? And so we had a lot of people who were smoking dope and they really had memory problems, you know? They'd be kind of talking and kind of their conversation would kind of wander and that was a joke. And, and if, you, if you're in a group of people who have all got memory problems, it's a joke, you know? It isn't like you're surrounded by people and you're like being embarrassed to say anything because you're afraid, you know? And so it's really good for the for the seniors themselves. It's just a great program. And it's this wonderful collaborative program among the three communities with 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 Northboro, Marlboro, and Hudson. Mm -hmm. And and it, it's been it's really it's been a kind of an anchor for other stuff among the three senior center directors that they've been doing more stuff together and they started with that program, right? Yeah. So it's really I think it's terrific. I think it's just terrific. Uh, we're also going to start uh, as, uh, sometime this summer. We've apply, uh, the senior center has applied and gotten a grant for transportation east of Northboro. So that would be transportation if you needed to go to, let's say, Beth Israel, uh, one of the hospitals in Boston, or Framingham, or along 128. There would be a uh, be transportation provided through a probably a taxi. And th this is a grant that Eileen uh, applied for, and she has gotten money for it, and that program is going to be set up. That was always been a problem because our vans can go west of Northboro, but we cannot go east of Northboro. So people going to medical um, appointments primarily now have a vehicle to get east of Northboro. So I, I, I'm watching time because I want to make sure that we don't run over, but... And, and I know that our, our friends at, uh, at Northbro Cable will put this information on, on as a banner, but can you talk to people about if they wanna contribute, if they wanna contribute, who, do, who should they call, you know, what email should they use, right? I mean, this, this is a 501c3, right? So these are all legitimate tax deductible contributions yes. or what is, and you're, and you're just helping yourself. You're just helping, you're helping yourself, you're helping your parents, you know, you're helping people that 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 are you know you're helping you so just t can you just give people an, an, a, a a phone number and email address and then and then i'm sure um dana will, will use it as a banner also sure um friends of northboroughseniors.org is our website All and then, one word 
Yep, in Northboro with the O U G H. So, yep. yep. And then it would be info at friends of Northboro Seniors dot org. Henry, that's correct in terms of yes, it. Yes, it is. Yep. Yes. So, um, anyone who wants to find more information or donate or actually a membership, it's really inexpensive to be a member, and that's for anybody any age. You don't have to be right. a certain age to be a member. So that's where you can find everything you need to know right there. That's great. That's great. So thank you so much for this. This is just like really, really important. I think it's, it's so folks, you know, this is this, just go. I think the main thing, just go. I mean, if you're if you're a senior, it's it's this is a, it's this amazing place. Go for lunch. The de the dull men are all going to be there being dull. They'll be kind of in a corner. Right. And so you can kind of this is oh, no, we're far from dull. They're far. <laughs> oh, no, those are the those are those are the those are those smart men. Those are the ones that took the, yeah. the sharp men. That's the that's the other tip. So 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 go and and go to and buy some jewelry or contribute some jewelry. There's so many ways that you can do this and be part of this community. We are in this together. All seniors, we're all in this together. And the younger ones need to help the older ones. The healthy ones need to help the sick ones. You know, we're all in this together. So and that's the place to find out how you can help. So thank you very much. Thank you both very much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And folks, we'll see, we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you. Thank you.